Hey everybody, this is Mazzy is 616 here with another video for you guys, and today do I have a treat. First things first, we are doing a Crimson Vow draft pack versus draft pack against Men Men Midnight Hunt. So we're gonna see who does better. Do the vampires or the werewolves do better? In Crimson Vow, we are looking for Chandra dressed to kill, and Midnight Hunt, we are looking for that meat hook massacre. Then at the end, just to see what we get, we're gonna open up the collector booster of Innistrand. Crimson Vow because honestly we all know Crimson Vow is my favorite set so if you guys could like subscribe comment down below let me know what you want to see let me know if you enjoy these types of videos uh, let's see what we can get next time and without any further ado let's hop on into the packs so we got three draft packs here uh, showcase Soren, Chandra dress to kill both of those would definitely definitely be hitting hard so we've got a fear of death adamant will we're gonna go through these kind of quick you don't need to spend a whole lot of time on them unless we see something cool. See any showcases. No showcase. Ooh, Faith Bound Judge. Mythic. First one. Ding, ding. And we got an island and double-sided cards. So not too bad. Not too bad. At least we're starting off with a mythic. I'm going to set that down for a second so I can get my sleeves ready. Had to go fetch them real quick. All right. Faith Bound Judge. One mythic in the bag. Let's see what we've got here. Defender, Flying, and Vigilance, 4-4 four, for four, 3, not bad. If Faithbound Judge has two or fewer Judgment Counters on it, put a Judgment Counter on it. Has three or more Judgment Counters on it and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Disturb, 5, so you can bring it back from the Graveyard for a Sinner's Judgment. Put a Judgment Counter, three or more, Enchanted Player loses the game. Put into a Graveyard from anywhere else to exile it. That's actually a pretty cool sounding card. I don't think it's worth too terribly much. I could be wrong. But it seems like it'd be a lot of fun to play. Hey, that mono white aggro deck that we reviewed last week, that could probably go good in that. Uh, nah, it's a little slow. This with the defender, you have to have the judgment counters on it. But it could be a good defense for the aggro deck. All right, as usual, just gonna kind of breeze through these. Ah, uh, we have a foil, but it's not a good foil. Maybe the actual rare will be better. Yeah, that's a stitcher and he's not very good. Ooh, Shattered Sanctum, that is actually a pretty good card. We get the uh, white black dual slow land as it's known. We got ourselves a mountain. And we got ourselves a Groff Visionary Stitcher, which I can tell you from my memory is not worth that much. It's not at all. Uh, just for your guys' information, because I know some people hear slow lands, tap lands, fetch lands, all that different stuff. I'm going to explain to you why this is called a slow land. Uh, that way you'll know. So in Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow, you have lands where if you control two or more other lands that enters the battlefield tapped, that's considered a slow land. Because you have to have two or more lands or this will enter and tapped. So that's a better three drop or four drop unless you need the other mana. But yes, yeah, so unless you need the mana, that's better to be dropped a little later in the game. But ooh, hey, look, there's one of our uh, showcases that we want to get. Don Hart. All right. Now we've got... Resistant Squad, Fell Stinger, Infestation Expert, and Curse of Hospitality. What crap is that? Sorry, but we all know Curse of Hospitality isn't that good. All right, so Midnight Hunt only has to beat Shattered Sanctum, from my understanding. Maybe Faithbound Judge is better than I thought, but that shouldn't be too hard. In Midnight Hunt, we are looking for any of the slow lands. We are looking for. Uh, if we can get a, uh, if we can get a, uh, Meat Hut Massacre, that's what I'm looking forward to. Fairy, who slows to sunset borderless would be nice, or I guess full art, extended art, however you want to call it. I have not opened a lot of Midnight Hunt draft. I've opened a lot of Midnight Hunt set, but not the draft packs. So let's see what they got here. Ooh, these are nice. Stone of Vitality. That is a Shady Traveler. We've got a Gavany. Dawn's Guard. We've got a Corpse Cobble. Hound Tamer. And a Light Up the Night. That's not very good. All right, Light Up the Night. I, I would peg it at about 50 cents. Maybe not even that much. Let's look it up real quick. So X that to any target. It deals X plus one damage instead. If that target's a creature, a Planeswalker. Flashback, remove X loyalty counters you control if you cast a spell this way. X can't be zero. Eh, 
Eh, it's all right. It's okay. All right. We got a timeless guide. We're gonna go ahead and go through here. Dual, clarion, phantom carriage. There we go. Like I said, I'm not really expecting a whole lot. Innistrad, this set, kind of disappointed to be honest. I was expecting it to be better. Ooh, Valdric, Astral Archmage. It's neither day nor if it, it becomes day. It's interest battlefield. You cast cost X to cast where X is his power. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a plus one, plus one counter. That's actually not bad. We got planes, a zombie. I'm not sure how well he does. Uh, ooh. I don't know the blue, red Ravnica, but I have a feeling he'd actually be pretty good in a blue, red deck. Especially during the Midnight Hunt station with how often it would change between night and day with werewolves, vampires, and all that. Or werewolves changing at every other moment. That could be fun. Shipwreck Sifters. Let's go ahead and see if we can't scoot all the way to the good stuff. Which is uncommon. So we got Hungry for more. Looks like we might have a foil back there, but not likely. Like I said, I'm really not expecting much. Ooh, Spell Run Painter. And we got Memory Deluge. Ooh, that was a good card that was reprinted in those Challenger decks. Want to say this is maybe a $2 card? Maybe? Uh, like I said, it was doing well until it got reprinted. So, we'll slide that in. I uh, look at top X cards, where X is the amount of mana, total mana, so four or seven. Put two of them in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library. It's a good library search. Now, if I had to take a guess, I would say that uh, Crimson Val won that. So that, that was a bit of a bust. Not the best opening, but we can still get lucky in the Crimson Val uh, collector booster box of destruction thing. God, these things are complicated to get into. So, I don't normally recommend buying these, but they were like 12 bucks at Walmart whenever I went to go get. So, 12 bucks for a collector's pack. Ain't bad. Uh, we've already got Count Dracula. There's not really much else we're looking for. But maybe we can get a Borderless Chandra Dress to Kill. Or a uh, Borderless Foil. Or a Showcase. Any of those would be good. Let's just go and rip this down the side. So, whatever our double-sided token is, it's got a zombie on the back. And we got aim for the head. Wonder light, there's that. Edgar's awakening. All the way to the forest. That's where we need to go. Alright. Patchwork crawler. Alright, these prices will pop up. Markov Enforcer Borderless. Path of Peril Borderless. Not the best, but still good. Blood Craze Socialite, we could go without. Falcon Wrath Celebrants, we could go without. Parker's Journal, ah, enters battlefield with a number of suspect counters on it, equal to the greatest number of creatures a player controls, remove a suspect counter, draw a card, sacrifice a draw a card, and shaky at best, blood petal celebrant, boo, and mirror hall mimic, enters battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except it's a spirit in addition to its other types, it's got a disturb cost, is there anything behind it, that's that spirit one, and Ghastly Mimicry, create a token that's a copy of Enchanted Creature, will be put in the graveyard. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's okay, I would guess. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of stumped on this one. I don't believe Mirror Hall Mimic's that good. Uh, Harker's Journal, uh, no, no, I, I would say not. Path of Peril, I'm pretty sure isn't good at all. Like, at all. Because you're looking at a three cost to destroy all creatures. Yeah, no. Markov Enforcer and Mediocre at best. I would guess... Well, let's let's take a look because this is a commander specific card. When other vampire in battlefield fights up to one target creature and both controls dealt damage creates a blood token yeah, I mean I'm, I'm just not feeling it I, I think this whole opening was a bust we did get the shattered sanctum so that was better than nothing but outside of that I'm pretty disappointed from a graveyard put a plus one plus one counter has all activated abilities of all creatures exiled with it that could actually be worth quite a bit but it's a little pringled as you can see so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up all the rares we got 
So all in all, patchwork, like I said, these I'm not sure about. Your home mimic. Memory Deluge is pretty decent. That one might be Light Up the Night, Curse of Hospitality. Shattered Sanctum I know is good. Visionary Stitcher I know is not good. And Faithbound Judgment might be all right. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that opening. Uh, if you want my advice, go buy singles. Let me waste my money opening cards and you guys just go get the singles. I understand that sometimes you just want that thrill of opening it. But as you can see, for the most part, it's just not worth it. If you would, go check out my uh, videos on the separate standard challenger decks uh i've done one on all of them by the time this video comes out so definitely go give them a look thank you guys so much for watching like i said like subscribe comment down below let me know what you want to see let me know what you want to open and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next time